Apple Incorporated, the world's most innovative and influential company of modern day time. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. From the Macintosh computer in 84. You've just seen some pictures of Macintosh. Now I'd like to show you Macintosh in person. You can take your whole music library with you right in your pocket. To the iPod in 2001, an iPhone in 2007. This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. Today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone. Here it is. Apple has withstood the test of time and arguably may very well be the greatest American company in history. Yeah, I think it's a historic day, not just for Cupertino, but for tech. Now, I don't think it ends here. We believe this is a $4 trillion mark cap. We believe this is a $4 trillion mark cap by 2025. And at the end of the day, Apple continues to play chess while others are playing checkers. From Ford Motor Company, General Electric, Walt Disney to Microsoft, every company that has held the title of greatest American company has either slowed down. Uh, people can take incredible risks, and if they're successful, they can have incredible rewards. Or fell apart altogether. I'm one of the world's wealthiest men. The target was Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates. Gates was momentarily and understandably shaken. Rental chain Blockbuster has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. But Apple hasn't relinquished its hold just yet, despite very formidable competition. NVIDIA's new entry into the trillion dollar valuation club, just the latest milestone in the AI boom we've Carl, seen. Carl, we may need a new name or a new moniker for the big tech basket uh, powering broader market gains this year. Fang, it just no longer captures what has been happening in big tech as newcomers to the trillion dollar club like NVIDIA, as you mentioned, they power that new AI revolution. The names in that group, the Magnificent Seven, they are all up between 35 and 180 percent this year. Steve Jobs once said that people don't know what they want until you show it to them. Why do we need a revolutionary user interface? I mean, here's four smartphones, right? Motorola Q, the Blackberry, Palm Treo, Nokia E62, the usual suspects. And what's wrong with their user interface? The problem with them is really sort of in the bottom 40 there. It's, it's this stuff right here. They all have these keyboards that are there whether you need them or not to be there. And what happens if you think of a great idea six months from now? You can't run around and add a button to these things. They're already shipped. So what do you do? It doesn't work because the buttons and the controls can't change. They can't change for each application, and they can't change down the road if you think of another great idea you want to add to this product. Well, how do you solve this? Hmm. It turns out we have solved it. We solved it in computers 20 years ago. We solved it with a bitmap screen that could display anything we want, put any user interface up, and a pointing device. We solved it with the mouse, right? We solved this problem. So how are we going to take this to a mobile device? Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen, a giant screen. Now, how are we going to communicate this? We don't want to carry around a mouse, right? So what are we going to do? Oh, a stylus, right? We're going to use a stylus. No. No. Who wants a stylus? You have to get them and put them away, and you lose them. Yuck. Nobody wants a stylus. So let's not use a stylus. We're going to use the best pointing device in the world. We're going to use a pointing device that we're all born with. We're born with 10 of them. We're going to use our fingers. We're going to touch this with our fingers. And we have invented a new technology called multi-touch, which is phenomenal. It works like magic. Our compact disc player. And for those who don't drive, 
Sony introduces the portable compact disc player. For as long as I can remember, technology has transcended mankind. From the first CD player, microwave, computer, to the internet. Technology has always taken on new paths, like the current iteration of technology with AI and spatial computing, which blends digital content with your physical space. I mean, I can only speak for myself, but I see technology as an extension of the natural world for mankind. It coaxes us into believing that once you enter this realm of the unknown, there's no going back in time. This imaginary line, once it's crossed, either improves things for us or will threaten the present moment in time as we know it. The unknown. Sometimes it's hard to visually capture because the future is undetermined. As Steve Jobs once said when he spoke of connecting dots. You have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path, and that will make all the difference. When the past becomes a present, you lose a future. This is what makes Apple special. The company has continued to dominate in many areas, and surprisingly, not just tech, but globally. It's all been incremental. There hasn't been any quantum leap in, in Apple's product mix, and that, and, but that hasn't stopped it. You can see it right there. I mean, that obviously has a lot to do with momentum and the narrow advance that, that we've seen in the NASDAQ, obviously. But Apple has hit on a lot of cylinders. Just, you know, it didn't go from an eight cylinder to a 12 cylinder. It's just got a really good eight cylinder. There is one more thing. We have one more thing. It's the unveiling of Apple's next chapter. Introducing Apple Vision Pro. 